considered two very large parallel non-conducting sheets with uniform negative surface charge density negative sigma. Here these sheets are drawn edge on, so they are perpendicular to the screen. The distance between the sheets is d, which is much much smaller than the size of the sheets. So the sheets can be considered as very large compared to d. Find the electric fields a distance L away here and a distance L away there. These very large sheets have planar symmetry, so all their electric field lines are parallel to each other and are all perpendicular to the sheets, which means the fields are uniform on the right side uniform on the left side and uniform in between. What is the field in between? There is none. Because the uniform electric field produced by each of the sheets over here are equal and opposite, so the net electric field in this region is zero. To find the field out here, we can use Gauss's law. The closed integral of e dot dA equals to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. Again, when we use Gauss's law to find the electric field, we need to make a Gaussian surface that goes through the location we're interested in. And we need E and the cosine to be constants so we can take them out of the integral. What Gaussian surface should we make? There is planar symmetry, so we would make prism shapes like any of these. For convenience, I would make a cylinder that goes through this point. And I can either make a cylinder like this or a longer one extending to both sides symmetrically. For now, let's use the shorter cylinder. Although the magnitude of the electric field is not the same everywhere on this Gaussian surface, it is okay because we only need to consider the part of the Gaussian surface that has non-zero flux. Which part of this Gaussian surface has non-zero flux? There is no electric field, so no electric flux between the two sheets. There's no flux through the curved part of the cylinder either, because the field lines are all parallel to this curved part, and no field lines go through this curved part. So the only part of the Gaussian surface with non-zero flux is the right end of the cylinder. By symmetry, everywhere on the right end, the electric field has the same magnitude so we can take E out of this integral. And everywhere on the right end of the Gaussian surface, the electric field goes leftward into the negative charge, and the outward normal vector dA goes to the right. So the angle between E and the dA is a constant 180 degrees, which can be taken out of the integral. When we made this Gaussian surface, we had to make it go through this point we're interested in. So when we solve this E, it would be the field at this location. Since this E is the electric field at the right end, the right end of the Gaussian surface must go through this point. But there is no requirement on how big we must make this area. So we can just make this cross-section an arbitrary area A. So the flux through this Gaussian surface is E times cosine 180, which is negative 1, times the integral of dA for the right end of this Gaussian surface, which is A. And this equals to the Q enclosed over epsilon naught. What is the enclosed charge? Within the Gaussian surface, we only have charges uh, on this part of a charged sheet. 
since the surface charge density is negative sigma, we can multiply this surface density by the area. So Q enclosed is negative sigma times uh, this area is uh, A. And the negative cancels, A cancels, we get the magnitude of the electric field is uh, sigma over epsilon naught. The electric field does not depend on the distance L, which tells us that this electric field over here is uniform. As long as the sheets can be considered as very large compared to the distance L and the plate separation D. And what if we choose this other Gaussian surface? How would our work change? We would have non zero flux through both ends of the Gaussian surface. By symmetry, E would have the same magnitude on both ends. And with enclosed charge being negative, the angle between E and the dA would be a constant 180 degrees. So this is E times negative 1 times the integral of dA for both ends. That will give us A plus A. The area would integral would be 2a. And then this would equal to the q enclosed over epsilon naught. This time, the Gaussian surface encloses the charges on this sheet of charge and that sheet of charge. They both have the same surface charge density, negative sigma. So the q enclosed would be negative sigma times the area, which will be a plus a, 2a. So the negative cancels, 2a cancels, and again, of course, we're going to get the same answer. The e is sigma over epsilon naught.